It's a Woman Crush Wednesday. Join Professor Buzzkill as he crushes on women from history who deserve more fame and glory. It's a rare thing indeed to find someone in history who stands up and rebels against all almost all the things she finds oppressive in society. Such a woman was Cho Jin, the Chinese revolutionary whose short but dramatic life has led her to be called China's Joan of Arc. Born in 1875 or 1877, experts disagree on the exact date. Cho Jin grew up in a fairly traditional Chinese household. She had her feet bound as a young woman, was placed in an arranged marriage, and had two children in quick succession. As a young woman, however, she was also able to study Chinese literature as well as martial arts. She not only studied both and celebrated Chinese heroes from the past in those subjects, she became active in both, writing poetry and learning and practicing martial arts, and she became very proficient at them. Not only that, her writing and her martial arts put her in contact with certain groups and organizations and political groups who advocated for reform and revolution, including overthrowing the Qing Empire. They wanted to replace it with a blend of traditional ethnic Han leaders and Western ideas of republican government. Further, they wanted other reforms, including the liberation of women from the strict social barriers, and expectations that existed under the Qing Empire. The problem was that expressing these radical ideas, much less fighting for these reforms, was very dangerous during Qing rule. Like many other radicals, Cho Jin left China in 1904 and went to Japan to practice her martial arts and further her political radicalism. This, of course, meant leaving her husband and children, which was anathema in traditional Chinese society. Also anathema was unbinding her feet and dressing in Western clothes, both of which she did before she left for Japan. Tokyo and other major cities in Japan harbored a lot of Chinese radicals, and Cho Jin worked and trained with other martial artists and revolutionaries while she was there. Her abilities quickly gained her admirers and followers among the Chinese revolutionary exile community in Japan. And legend has it that at a meeting of other revolutionaries, Cho gave a dramatic speech urging them to return to China immediately and join the proto-revolutionary groups there, that is in China. She finished this speech by plunging a dagger into the podium and shouting, If I return to the motherland... Surrender to the Manchu barbarians, by that she was referring to the Qing Empire, and deceive the Han people, stab me with this dagger. Now, whether this actually happened is a matter of some historical dispute. But what's not in dispute is that in 1906, she led a large revolutionary group of Chinese exiles back to the Chinese mainland, where they started teaching in schools. They founded and published revolutionary journals, and they agitated for the overthrow of the Qing. She published, quote, a respectful proclamation to Chinese 200 million women comrades, calling for the personal liberation of women, meaning an end to foot binding and arranged marriages, and the political and social reformation of China, which was overthrowing the Qing and founding a republican government. The Chinese authorities finally arrested her in 1907, taking her from the girls' girl school where she was teaching and torturing her, trying to get her to admit to revolutionary activities. She refused, so the government charged her with treason, using her writings as their main evidence. She was beheaded in mid-July 1907. Now, Although she's been criticized for thinking that China could undergo a more or less complete social and political revolution by overthrowing the Qing Empire, Cho Jin has become a hero and martyr for revolutionaries and feminists in China. In one of her most well-known and often quoted poems, Cho Jin used the unbinding of her own feet as a metaphor for the 
Unbinding of Social Repression in China. She wrote, Unbinding my feet, I clean out a thousand years of poison. With heated heart, arouse all women's spirits. Alas, this delicate kerchief here is half stained with blood and half with tears. Now, even though Cho Jin's influence was only one of the things that led to the Chinese revolutions in the early 20th century, she is revered today as a pioneer in inspiring social and political reform. Her poetry is still read and taught, and her tomb is still visited. The statue to her at her tomb foregrounds the type of sword she used in her martial arts, and a great many depictions of her in art and film emphasize the militant aspect of her life and career. But I think most scholars and historians of this period in Chinese history emphasize her poetry and her radical journalism. Those were, in the end, more inspiring and more effective than her martial arts. Perhaps this is a true case of the pen being mightier than the sword. Buzzkillers, for this Woman Crush Wednesday episode, I relied very heavily on the work of Amy Chin and Owen Guo of the New York Times, who researched and wrote about Cho Jean for the, for the New York Times' this new Overlooked series. This is a series of obituaries for people who should have gotten them decades ago. I strongly recommend the Overlooked series as a competitor, if you will, to our Woman Crush Wednesdays and Man Crush Mondays. But of course, I hope you'll continue to give us a listen. Talk to you next week. Hello, this is Sebastian Buzzkill. Please support my daddy by going to ProfessorBuzzkill.com and clicking on the Patreon button. While you're there, subscribe to his email list and shop the Buzzkill bookshelf. Follow him on Facebook, on Twitter, at Buzzkill Prof and on Instagram at Professor Buzzkill. Professor Buzzkill is part of Entertainment One's podcast network. It's available on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play and all major podcast apps. Please leave a review while you're there. Thanks for listening.